Hello everyone. It's uh, Deb Talks once again. And today I'd like to share God's word from James chapter one, verse two and on. Let me read it for you. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. How is it that James could say, consider it pure joy? He doesn't say, consider it pure joy when you have a chocolate cake and it, it's actually calorie free. Or, you know, consider it pure joy when you get a free gift of a million dollars. You know, it says, consider it pure joy, pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. What? What? That doesn't really make sense because when you face trials, you're usually stressed, distraught, distraught um, heartbroken, sad, in grief. And this has been um, a, a struggle for me um, in recent days. And my close friends, um, they would know things that I struggled with recently. Um, it was really hard to consider it pure joy. Yeah, when you when you lose your loved one, my mom went to be with the Lord last November, and that's about you know only eight months ago, and it's been hard um, grieving through that. And also, I had to relocate. Um, moved away from the place where my family lived for 18 years and just starting all over in a new field and now I'm here in America and you know it, it doesn't it's not a natural thing to be joyful when you're facing hardship but there's a reason here it says for James he says because see there's a reason to be joyful there's a reason to choose joy. He doesn't just say it just so you can have positive thinking and forget your problems. No, there's a reason we can have joy. It says in verse three, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So trials are actually tests. You know what a test trial is, right? When you just drive your car or when you, um, you know, go on, you, you take, um, you buy something online on trial, which means they'll give it to you for free for about half, you know, for 30 days. And then if you don't like it, you can return it. So you're testing it out. And a real test, uh, perhaps is, uh, when you learn something in school and you take a test to see if you know it well, and if you pass the test, you can go on to the next level. So here it is. God allows trials, here it says, as a test of our faith. And what God desires is not to just put us through suffering, it says, but to help us to produce perseverance. Now, perseverance means being able to have, not just being patient and holding it in, but it means your ability to withstand and overcome hardships and struggle gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Then verse four says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Mature and complete in your faith. Mature and complete in your walk with God, in your life of glorifying God. 
because God is doing a work inside of us. We are not finished product right now. God is refining us, strengthening us, changing us. Um, you know, this is also called um, sanctification. It means God is, is changing you to be more like Him. You know, becoming like Him in all His goodness and love and glory. We are children of God if we have faith in Christ. And God doesn't just leave us to live in our old ways. He wants us to become more like Him, to be complete and mature in our faith. And of course, we all know that that is something that is a lifetime journey. There's no way that we could ever be complete right now. But in our lifetime journey of growing and changing and healing, in verse 5, which is such an encouragement, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, do you lack wisdom? Do you need more wisdom? I don't know anybody who would say, oh, I have enough, thank you. No, we need wisdom. Wisdom is not just knowledge, book knowledge. It's, it's, um, it's about living your life, okay, that is productive. Living your life that is a blessing to others. Living your life um, that is truly glorifying to God in every aspect. So I need wisdom in finances. I need wisdom in my relationships, how I raise my children, how I um, even take care of my family, my in-laws, my parents. I need wisdom in time management and even wisdom in how I you know, manage my, my health. We need wisdom and true wisdom comes from God. It says, if you lack wisdom, you should ask God. He gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. So what does it mean? Wisdom is only one prayer away. When you say, God, I'm stuck right now. In this trial, I cannot see the good in it. In this pain, it seems meaningless. And a lot of pain, a lot of problems, they feel meaningless. And I, I ask that question a lot, you know, in recent days. In the pain and the trials, I ask, why, you know? It doesn't make sense. But here it is. When God says to choose joy, the reason we choose joy is not because we know and we got the answer and we we actually see the, the solution. We choose joy because we know God is in control. We know that God has a plan. He's working for our good, working towards His glory. And He's actually working something in me towards something good you know producing perseverance in me and giving me an opportunity to receive his wisdom and experience his power and there's nothing like a trial that can really do that for you and one condition that he gives in verse 6 it says when you ask you have to believe and not doubt don't just say God give it to me then you turn around and say I still don't understand I don't know what to do a lot of times we have all this baggage of negative thoughts, all this, you know, just junk from past experiences that make us believe that nothing good can come. And, and we are all guilty of that. And I would call them just ants. Ants, A-N-T, okay, ants, the little bugs. I don't think, and I'm not literally talking about insects, but, but ants, okay, that, stand for automatic negative thoughts. Yeah, automatic negative thoughts that pop up in your mind that say, it's not gonna work out. I'm a failure, I'm a loser. People are gonna say this, judge me, do this. You know, and every day I am struggling to kill those ants. I, every day it is, it takes effort for me to recognize that there's an ant right now floating around and, and starting to sink in. And what I need to do is I need to kill those ants. I need to kill those ants by doing something, by swinging a bat. That's right, swinging a bat, B-A-T. And you know what B-A-T is? Here's a bat. <laughs> B-A-T is B, always thankful. Be thankful for what? The trials and hardships? Actually, yes. Because, not because you know why, but because you know God loves you. You know God is in control. 
you know he's got a plan and this is the process. So you can still choose joy and have tears. I've, I've experienced that. You can have joy and still have tears. Yeah, because you know, sadness and grief is an emotion that is real to everyone, but joy is, um, joy comes from the Father, but it's also a choice because it's a free gift from God. How do I know that? Well, it says here in verse 16, don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Every good and perfect gift. And if you know that, then you won't be deceived by your circumstances. I love verse 12 as well. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. What is up with this crown here? Okay. This crown of life, it's kind of a symbolism, but it's also real. When you meet the Lord in heaven, this is um, an eternal reward, okay, that God promises to those who love him, who trust him, who chooses joy. Yeah. You have to choose joy. That's, it's, it's a choice, okay, to trust God. Yeah. It doesn't come, feelings don't come first, okay? Trust me, that's, the feelings don't come. Okay, I don't wanna have joy, or it's not that I, I can't have joy, but I can choose to have joy. I can choose to praise him right now. I can choose to whether listen to the ants and follow the ants, okay, in my mind, and the circumstance that doesn't make any sense at all, or I can choose to see everything through the eyes of God's love. If I really see things through the eyes of God's love, I will know that I'm loved. Even if I'm rejected by people, even if I am misunderstood by people, even if I'm, you know, really judged by other people. And even if I do make mistakes and, you know, perhaps I really messed up. One thing is for sure, God, his love for you and love for me will never change. He is the one who never changes. And okay, all these things are just, you know, cute props that I use with children, but I just wanted to share that verse from James 1, 2 has given me a lot of grace this week um, because when it was really hard and there are moments where I want to give up, um, that's when I know, okay, I have Either I can follow the ants, okay, and just go ahead and live in my fear and disbelief, and shame and frustration and anger, um, or, okay, I can just take a deep breath, lay it all down at the feet of the cross. Remember that Christ said it, it is finished. Choose joy choose joy because this trial is part of the plan yeah this trial is part of the plan verse 2 one more time consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything and if you do lack wisdom ask God He'll give it to you. And when your eyes open, when you receive the wisdom that comes from being close to Christ, because he is, he is capital W wisdom. Colossians 2, 2 and 3 says, in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and truth, wisdom and knowledge. When I get that, you'll begin to see, oh, that trial was actually a blessing. All right, God bless you this week. 
may you learn to choose joy, enjoy Christ, because that will never change. God bless you.